<clears throat> Excuse me, everyone. All right, we're uh, headed into chapter 11. We're actually skipping chapter 10 uh, for now. We will come back to it. Chapter 11. We've already done some parametric and polar review in class. So chapter 11 basically is doing calculus, all the stuff, almost all the stuff we've done with regular functions in both parametric and polar form and also vector form, which is actually very similar to parametric form. So today, um, two videos today, actually, I just didn't want to lump them all together and probably could have, but it might get a little long. Uh, first video on parametric calculus. So oops, what you see here is uh, how to find the area under the curve in parametric form, right? So remember in parametric form, we have X equals some function of T and Y equals some function of T. Now we're just going to find Today we're going to do is area under the curve, arc length, and surface area. Same basic things we've done in uh, rectangular form. So just a quick reminder over here on the left-hand side, what you see is uh, how it works in rectangular. I want to talk about the rectangle idea because it's really important. You will see it's really exactly the same thing. So if I have a function, y equals f of x, and we find the area under the curve. Remember, we find the area under the curve from a to b. We just called it f of x dx, right? But what did everything represent? Well, what I did was draw this little triangle here. Remember, so we're just finding the height of that rectangle. We're finding the area of that one rectangle and then adding them all together, right? So the height of that rectangle became f of x, whatever that function was. And the width of that rectangle, a little bit, tiny bit of space there, is the dx. Works exactly the same in parametric. So... Uh, now what you would see would be, uh, whoops, sorry, I switched my F and my G there on you. X equals G of T, Y equals F of T, and we're going from T equals A to T equals B. So whatever the picture looks like, you don't really even have to draw the picture of it. <laughs> um, pictures can be helpful, but it's the same basic idea. So watch now. But now when I draw that rectangle, all right, so it's, uh, maybe I'll show you this first, right? It's the same thing. It's still the height of the rectangle times the width of the rectangle, just like it was. We have all these infinitely amount of rectangles we're adding up. Notice my limits are in T, though, so everything needs to be written in terms of T. So the height of that rectangle just becomes, it's the same thing as it was in the last problem. In the last problem was Y, but we called Y F of X. In this problem, Y is Y, whatever it is, some function of uh, T in this particular case, right? And then my width of the rectangle, we're still going to call DX just like we did before. But x is a bad variable right now, right? Because everything's in terms of t. Um, so that dx, remember, we know what x is. So that dx, oops, let me show you here, uh, becomes g prime of t dt, whatever that g is. That's my x, right? x equals something. Um, take the derivative, and now everything's in terms of t. So if you think about the rectangle idea, it makes things really simple and really straightforward. So just let me do a little quick example here for, uh, for you. Um, by the way, I, I'm sure I mentioned in the class, but I'll mention it right now too, that um, all of these integrals, you can use your calculator on. I don't want to have you wasting your time with integrals right now. We've done a lot of work with integrals, so it's just mostly just to uh, plug it in your calculator because we do need practice with the calculator, plus you can check your answer that way. So it doesn't even matter what this looks like. And by the way, I just made up this problem like two seconds ago. So I'm not even sure if the picture would look right, but so just kind of bear with me. So that I got some picture here, same thing, right? We're going from A to B in this case. My A is one and my B is three. Um, and remember the area of that rectangle is the height of the rectangle, which is Y, and the width of that rectangle, which is DX. So for this particular problem, my Y is 2T cubed plus 2. Right, there's my Y, and then my DX is the derivative of that. So the derivative of that is 6T minus 2 DT. Um, in all my videos here, I'm just going to stop there. The rest is just plug them into the calculator and um, get out an answer. So that's area, pretty straightforward. We don't actually have any uh, area problems in our book. Um, so I just wanted to uh, show you that so you knew it, um, but you are responsible for it, of course. So now we're gonna move, give me one second here. We're gonna move to a little section I just call parametric calculus. Um, so we're gonna do arc length and surface area. Um, this whole entire chapter is just really formula driven. It's just a lot of formulas to memorize. Um, you're gonna set up the problems with a formula 
and then you're just going to use your calculator to solve them. Or if it was on a non-calculator part, you would actually do the actual integral. So just a quick reminder, this is the formula for arc length um, in rectangular, right? The square root of 1 plus the derivative of squared. We did arc length. Um, where am I here? We did arc length um, at the end of sec chapter 8, sorry, um, just a while back. So... Um, uh, there is an equivalent form in parametric. I, I was going to show you how it works, but since we got two videos, I'm going to skip some stuff here. So I'm just going to go straight to the formula. It's just totally formula driven, right? And here's the formula. Uh, two different ways to write it. So arc length, I used L. Um, we're going to have limits T, right? T uh, from A to B. And I guess I should write this down again for you up here. X equals f of t and y equals, oh, I got a little problem I see, I'll fix it. Um, so arc length in parametric is the square root of each derivative squared, all right? So you see f prime squared, take the derivative of f, take the derivative of g, or this is x. So over here, I lost a plus sign there. I just call it dx dt uh, squared and dy dt squared. This um, formula only works if that curve doesn't cross itself. Um, probably not something we'll have to worry about in our class, but just so you know, if you cross, if, if your graph did, you know, something like, I don't know, this, like the infinity sign, we'd have to stop where it crosses itself and start over. In this case, we could use symmetry, but just as an example. Right. So uh, again, I'm just going to set it up. So it's just formula driven, like I said. Um, Oh, gosh, what did I do there? Sorry, this looks funny. The formatting's a little bit funny here. Let me rewrite this. X equals cosine cubed, Y equals sine cubed from 0 to pi over 4. It's just totally formula-driven, right? So we're going to go straight to a formula. We're going from 0 to pi over 4. And it's just the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. That's it. So the derivative of X, it's a little uh, chain rule, 3 times cosine squared t times the derivative of cosine, which is a negative sine t, plus uh, dy dt, so 3 times sine squared, and then the derivative of sine is a cosine. That's all there is to, oh, no, not yet, sorry, and I got to square each one of those, right? Um, let me show you something. So you, again, you can just use your calculator. I will um, tell you, though, that a lot of these trig ones, especially, these are really meant to be done without a calculator, which means they're going to be simpler than they look. So sometimes trying to plug in a, thing, a function like this into your calculator can get a little hairy, right? A little tricky. There's a lot going on, parentheses and order of operations and squaring and things like that. So um, sometimes it's worth simplifying. I'm probably going to run out of space here. But I watch. Um, that's all going to be squared. So it's going to be 9 cosine to the fourth t, and that sine is going to become positive. So sine squared t plus 9 sine to the fourth t cosine squared t. If I factor out a 9 and a cosine squared t and a sine squared t, what's left is a cosine squared t plus a sine squared t, which is just 1, yeah? And then if I take that square root, you get 3 cosine t sine t. So there's your integral. So a lot of times these can simplify. You could actually just do that integral really quick with u sub, or you could put that in your calculator. But just know a lot of these ones can be simplified to kind of make your life a little bit easier rather than trying to put it all on the calculator. Um, we actually call this um, an arc length differential, this thing, square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared, dt squared. We call it arc length because um, arc length differential because we're going to use it in other formulas. So if you just think about it as um, being an entity by itself, it can be a little bit helpful in um, other problems like what's coming next. So um, you may remember surface area, isn't it? Next, we're going to do surface area revolving. So this is just a review of um, what we did in chapter 8. Uh, if we revolve y equals f of x about the x-axis, it's uh, 2 pi y 
times that arc length formula, right? One plus the derivative squared. And then if we did about the y axis, it's two pi x times one plus the derivative squared in terms of y, right? So around the y axis, it had to be in terms of y. Around the x axis, it had to be in terms of x. So this is from chapter eight. The formulas work exactly the same in this chapter. So um, it's, it's equivalent. So about the x-axis, so if you go back to here, it was 2 pi, let me just write this down so you can see it. Remember here it was 2 pi y times the arc length formula, right? 1 plus the derivative squared. So it's the same idea here. It's 2 pi y, same thing, and times the arc length formula. But we're in parametric, right? So the arc length formula is dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. And then if we're going to go about the y-axis, same thing, right? It's just 2 pi x times that arc length formula. OK, let's go ahead and do an example uh, now of arc length. Uh, before I do that, though, I noticed one little mistake here. Um, in both of these, I had a dx here and a dy here, because I was thinking x and y in terms of x in terms of y. But remember, they're all in terms of t at this point. So this, these would just be dt's here. So uh, examples, x equals cosine t, y equals 1 plus sine t. We're going to revolve it around the x-axis and find the surface area. So x-axis forces this one, right? So I always think right back to rectangular. 2 pi, since we're going around the x-axis, everything needs to be in terms of x, which means it's y. If it was around the y-axis, it would be in terms of y, which would be x. So 2 pi y times the arc length formula. Whether you're in rectangular or parametric, it works the same. So my y is 1 plus sine t. And then arc length formula and parametric is dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. So we just take both derivatives and square them. So remember, cosine is a negative sine. And we're going to square that. And then the derivative of y, which is 1 plus sine t, which is just cosine t. And we're going to square that dt. Of course, if you're just plugging in your calculator, that's just a big fat one right there, right? Sine squared plus cosine squared. It's a lot easier to. Um, plug it um, right into your calculator there. One more video coming on um, vectors, and we'll go over um, both stuff um, tomorrow.